everyone. Welcome to episode three of Enforcer and the Dude. Russell Ingle, Paul Morris, back again for everything motorsport. Now, this is a place where you won't find pristine iron shirts or suit jackets. No, no. We don't have that. <laughs> you won't find us sitting behind a shiny desk. Just a bar and a barrel. And you won't hear pre-rehearsed segments on hard-hitting questions. What you will get here is no BS, absolute facts, unbiased about everything to do with motorsport. I reckon we've nailed that one. Well, we're giving the fans what they want, Russ. Absolutely. <laughs> Give the fans what they want. Make racing great again, That's it. as you say. <laughs> right, coming up on the show. Uh, man, we've got a few special things going down here. And uh, we have been listening to you guys, so get ready. This one's going to be dynamite. Do not go anywhere. Do not switch off. So I'm not going to preempt anything, but get ready for it. Uh, we're going to have Speedway on as well. Yeah. A lot of questions, Speedway Paul. Yeah, all the, a lot of comments on, on the Facebook and on the YouTube channel about Speedway and Sprint Cars. So. Absolutely, got a bit going on there. Uh, we got, um, we're going to talk a little bit about Aussies and New Zealanders overseas. Don't get enough credit some of their, some of our drivers. No, so we're going to recap on them and there's some, a lot of success going over there. So yep. let's give them some support. And our grassroots segment. And get ready for it, we've got our first sponsor for the grassroots segments. Someone Fantastic. that's jumped on board and it's very, very appropriate. So make sure you uh, check out for that one. And we're going to be answering a few fan comments as well. We've got half a dozen right at the end of the show. And uh, some really cool comments have been coming through. So we've been picking the most popular. And uh, respectful. So to, and respectful. So keep up the respectful comments. We like respectful fans. Yeah. Very good. So uh, we're into it. We are into it. Right. Paul, Perth. Uh, let's go into supercar land because, yep. again, we don't want to be known as only talking about supercars, but it is the biggest circus in town. We've got to talk a little bit about You were in Perth. Yeah, I was there. Uh, what was the event like? Night event and new surface. That was the two biggest changes. Yeah, well, let's go to the night event itself. Yep. It, it was great being there. Uh, supercars did a fantastic job with the lighting, the fireworks, and I really felt I was at something special, and the people that were there did as, did as well. But I think the, the new surface just gave the cars too much grip and the racing was dead set boring. Well, the braking distances look damn short. Yeah, like, damn short. How can you pass? No, well, you couldn't without actually moving someone out of the way, which you saw a bit of that going on. Not enough. Mid-pack, there was some stuff going on, but yeah. uh, up the front, it was just, just processional and nothing really happened. So, so spectacle good. Racing, not so good. Racing, not so good. Yeah, it's a shame because, like you said, at night the cars look fantastic, you know, and we, we've... Yeah, everyone had their phones up and we're taking photos oh, of the cars and the people that are having a great time. I reckon it's a great concept. Yeah. You know, it should be more of it. Expensive way to, as well. Expensive setup to do those sort of things. So I can understand they can't do it at every event. But, yep. But, uh, yeah, I, I thought... I was expecting a lot more from the surface. I thought it might widen the track and up, up a bit, but it actually looked worse because there was no tie deck. There was, no, there was no tie deck and no chance to for anyone to really make a mistake and and look, you saw that where um where Scotty got a bit wrong footed in uh, in some out of sync traffic mm. and then there was a chance for Jamie to get down the inside and like in the old days you just would have levered yourself in there and opened the door and worried about it later but but he actually pulled out of it and it was just I was just thinking that that the guys aren't having a go anymore. Is that, is that because of regulations, you reckon? Or they're too worried about, you know, getting getting pinged a drive through, getting points? Yeah, the risk versus the reward's not there. So you, you make a pass and there's some contact and the first thing that happens is the teams are emailing race control <laughs> and there's cameras and there's all, this, same old, same all old. this stuff going on, which is just making the racing vanilla. They need to just let them take the gloves should, off and get on with it. They those damn cameras out of the cars. Yeah. Because back where we were racing, never had cameras and, and they're just like... They're like these cameras you buy for everyday road car now. Like, well, I reckon know. there's another segment in that. Oh, absolutely. We've got, to, we've yeah. got to talk about it. About that. Yeah. Now, tyres, uh, there was a bit... Um, you actually got hold of a pretty pretty cool photo here. Yeah. Um, that was after race what, one. That came off a Commodore. That was off a Commodore. Yeah, yeah. Man, it's... Uh, I can't tell you which destroyed. one it was, but it was red and it had a bull on the side I of it. I didn't see it over the telecast at all, though. How did you get that picture? Well, like you do, I was just walking around the pits and watching the tyres coming off the car and strolled down to Dunlop and yeah. had a look and just started ripping a few photos because you want to see... <laughs> they, which, didn't, which, they didn't mention it. They sort of hid that pretty well. Well, they were there to see. And that, that's how hard that on on, um, on the Saturday race that the Commodores were pushing to stay up. They, they blistered their tyres. Just running real aggressive. 
Yeah, I reckon it's just they're pushing that hard, and it's a different. See where it's blistered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. it's just the 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 tyres sliding across the road. So, yeah. yeah, and so but, something to do with the new surface as well. Yeah, to, yeah, for sure. Yeah, okay. Interesting photos, though. Seriously, and uh, look, let's go back to some of our predictions. Let's yep. go back to the previous show. Now we said to you, folks, we said to you that don't worry, Ford fans. We don't think that the parity adjustments that they made to the Aero is going to make much difference. I mean. It, didn't look like it from the outset. No, it didn't. And if you look at the micro sectors, especially in qualifying, the two fastest cars down the straight, the 17 and the 12, <laughs> exactly what happens. And so, that's what you picked. <laughs> yeah. You said on the show, Paul said on the show uh, last episode that he thought, well, what they lose a little bit in downforce, they're going to pick up in straight line speed. There you go. There you go. It just happened. So they're, they're playing the game fantastically. Yeah. So there's no, so Ford fans shouldn't be in too much despair. No, uh, not there, at all. There didn't seem too much difference. In, in fact, even the Tickford Fords were still up there. I mean, Chaz still went all right. Yeah, obviously they've got a... You can tell they have an engine deficiency to the DJR Team Penske cars. Those guys have definitely got the, got the best engine, for sure. Yeah. Uh, anything else going on around there? I, I, actually, <laughs> you, rang, you rang me and told me that walking through the pits, there were so many people flooding up to you about the show. and. You, funny, funny comment that Paul made to me. Actually, he said, "Usually, I go to a racetrack and everyone wants to fight me." He said, "Now they want my autograph." It was, it was funny as hell when he called me. But so many people coming up about about the show. Well, there's that many. I, I think I I put a few on on Instagram Live, and a lot of people wanted to chat to chat to you. So I did a few yeah. videos, and you spoke to a couple no, no, of fans no, on the phone no, as well. No, that was cool. Which which was good. So like if. Well, I'm not used to go. I used to go into a racetrack and someone yeah. go, "Hey, Morris, you dickhead," or something. And <laughs> this guy's looking at me first up and saying, "Here we go again." He goes, "Oh, good uh, job, mate." Uh, so that's good. Oh, now mate, I know what um, it feels like to be you. Oh, well, thanks, mate. <laughs> oh, it's good to have an impact though, as well. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and the good thing about it, Paul, is a lot of the industry have been looking at the show and what we've been doing, coming up with a few sayings like that. Yeah, come Who in. Is? How'd you get in? <laughs> <laughs> I never serves drinks. <laughs> Tony Conker. You're kidding me. The bar that never serves drinks. <laughs> the godfather of V8 supercars. <laughs> hey, Tony. Hey, Enforcer. Good to have you in. F. I was just reading on the poster outside yeah. from the Gold Coast Bulletin. I was hit by a 10 ton bowling ball. Do you remember that yeah. day well, at you, Oran Park? You said you always got to have a headline, mate. Mate, well, that's a while ago. Was it 2000? Yeah, yeah. 2000, yeah. And if you don't win the race, make sure they know you were in it. They certainly, <laughs> they certainly knew you were in it that day. You know, barbecue all around. <laughs> barbecue for 50,000. Oh, it's good to have you on, dude. Like, thanks. And you're the first, our very first guest on Enforcer and the Dude. Does it pay and more? Uh, uh, mate, the yeah. pay is lousy. You don't even get a drink. Clearly. <laughs> Clearly. We're, we're the only bar in the world that doesn't serve drinks. We're waiting for that big time beer sponsor. So, <laughs> right? Okay, all right. Why, so, why am I not surprised? No, no, you know me, mate. Why am I'm I not I'm a used car salesman from way back. Why am I uh, surprised? Look, it is, it is good to have you on. It's very fitting since you were, uh, well, we talk about the godfather, godfather of supercars, the, the man that started it all um, in motorsport in Australia. Well, perhaps didn't start it all, but perhaps stepped well, it up. Stepped it up. Because well, you commercialised it. Group Before you come along, the, the teams were actually paying entry fees. Yeah, that was That's a really it. interesting equation, wasn't it, back in yeah. day one? Just take, I took them through a whiteboard exercise, you know? Yeah. Because they all thought they were doing really well at Bathurst, and that was what I used as my example. I did a whiteboard exercise at Bathurst, which I think I proved each team, it was costing them seven or $9,000, I can't remember now, to go to Bathurst. They yep. all stood there with, all sat there with their mouths gasped. They all thought they were making good money at Bathurst, and I had all the numbers on the board. And, Oh, it was, oh, it's costing every team about seven, nine thousand dollars to go to Bathurst and race. Yeah, for the biggest right. day it was of the almost. Year. A, I wouldn't say it was. It's pretty amateur racing, up considering it's such a high-profile sport with high-profile drivers at that stage. Think of some of the names that are involved: the Perkins and Brocks, Johnsons. Yeah. It was sort of was it was sort of amateur racing compared to where you took it. Yeah, I guess it was. It's like anything in life. If you make it all so unfair for one group at the expense of everybody else it eventually breaks down and that was the problem. You had the right. stars and go, I come from the entertainment industry, so it was a really simple equation mm -hmm. for me. It, I looked at upon the, the stars who were creating the entertainment were getting the smallest slice of the pie. And how the hell does that happen? So all I did was yeah. spread the pie. And I spread the pie by taking off a whole of other people who were doing very nicely <laughs> out of it, thanks very much. But do you find that's why it worked? Because yeah, but you also made a bigger pie. I made a much bigger <laughs> you did. But that, that's why I think it <laughs> worked, didn't it, Paul? Yeah. Like, like, it's because yeah. you came from the entertainment industry. You didn't 
profess to know everything about the workings of cars. I mean, you wouldn't even know whether the engine was in the front or the back, really. Oh, it can be in either, actually. It can be yeah. in either. I don't yeah, think it can be in both simultaneously, though. But, but, but you, d you didn't go in there saying you wanted to change the world as far as the cars went. You said, no, hang on, promotional-wise, this is what I can do. The teams knew what they had to yeah, do mechanically. Absolutely. So it was a good combination because you weren't treading on each other's toes. They went, OK, Tony, you handle getting us fame and fortune and we'll do the racy bit. Yeah, that's sort of really how the split, you know, worked so well for so long. And... Uh, and where I was able to contribute to the car debate, if you like, because we mm. had some real hot ones around the boardroom table, because in those days we had a proper board, you know, there was eight or nine on the board, a couple of independents, a couple of guys from SEL and, you know, four team owners, and it was, it was a real genuine debate. Of every point was <laughs> really well debated. Well, you're involved in all of that. And, uh, and we didn't mind a debate, didn't we? We were up for right. a few arguments. But, you know, where I remember once, uh, you know, Roland wanted to bring in the same braking systems that were in the DTM cars in Germany. Or, the or carbon a, brakes. Yeah, a deviation of it. He yeah, had yeah. some you know, deal going with somebody. Around. But I, I listened to all the debate and it was fascinating. It was going to, you know, I don't know, I can't remember the number, but it was going to cost like every team a million bucks extra a year. So I listened to all this great debate and got to the end of the debate and I said, well, that's fantastic, but it's a load of bullshit. And yeah. it's, it's a load of bullshit for this reason. If you go up into the grandstands at Adelaide, say, yep. and you say to the average fan sitting there <laughs> watching this, we've got the latest, greatest million dollar braking system. You know what the fan says? Who cares? Who cares? What he'd yep. actually prefer is a bit like the Flintstones. He'd actually prefer the drivers to have no brakes and as they get to the corner, have to open the door <laughs> and put their foot out to slow it down. Because yeah. they want to see the bump and crunch and, you know, having to go and losing it a bit and getting it back. That's what the fans of the grandstands want. They don't, they don't care about it's technology. An, it's an excellent point, isn't it? They really, don't care about, they really, really honestly, oh, maybe 2% care about technology. 98% just want to see a good, a good they show. They want to see the action. They want to see a good yep. old car race. Yeah, they want to see oh, good yeah. old car racing. You know, the blue car gets in front of the red car, the red car gets in front of the blue car, the yellow car comes through, oh, the green car <laughs> wins at the last moment. That's what they want to see. Uh, it's not rocket science. Couldn't agree more. And that's what's been lost over this period of time. And I've got, I've got my views on where that's i reckon teams have too much influence now you talk about you know the board and commissions and i reckon they got too much influence it should be more independent is that how you see it ah uh, look i'm not you know i've got to be a bit careful here because i'm i'm not that close to it anymore no. i've been yeah, out of it yeah, seven yeah. years and you know i'm just you mean for but, regulations well, you're for, for regulations because okay let's look at the mechanical side wait. of it. it it's when you've got team owners involved you've you know, already making lost decisions. The, you've already lost the plot enforcer you've already lost the plot you know you're a race car driver you yeah. should have stayed in the seat the the, the, the issue is really yeah. simply yeah where it's gone wrong is i've forgotten the number one priority the fans. It, it's what the fans <laughs> want to see. It's what the fans want to see. Yep. The moment you start engineering everything up for what's great for the pit lane and mm. what's you know really good for this and really good for that, the moment you start the rule book becomes bigger than the, that. Well, barrel. that's what it is now. Yeah. Well, yeah. You, you know, it's, it's, but that's what that's what I'm saying. You've lost if it, the you involve team owners in on it, and, and there's so much self interest going on because you can't help yourself. If you're a team owner, you can't help no matter. I think in the early days there was more looking at the big picture. Yeah, they used to have a bit of a stab at it, but but it was more the big picture. I think now is it's so much self-interest going on. It's driven it this way, where it's oh, well, you know, you know, mechanically. It's bizarre. Without mentioning names, the start of the last race season, a team comes out with the latest widget gadget Commodore, yep. goes boom, yep. cleans everything up. Everybody else goes, what happened here? They go, huh. Well, you've got to be smarter than we are. So, you know, get your act together and try and knock us off. Yep. This year, you have the same thing happens, but it's another team. What happens? Oh, rule book. <laughs> Let, let's, let's adjust let's everything. Rules. Let's change the rules. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it's just, and the fans see through that. They just well, go, oh, they what, is, what is this? They're disenchanted. Of course. Well, have it, a, they just blow up about it, and it's such a bad look. And, it's and, a and terrible we, look. Last two shows, we've been commenting on this, that it's, it's just, it was badly handled as far as a perception from the, the punters, they went, well, hang on, what's going in here? Because of that very reason. Yeah, they say, yeah, well, yeah. well, hang on, this seems a bit uneven between the two. And seriously, Russ, everybody makes a mistake. I made plenty. Yeah. And, and one thing we used to do, and we used to have so many post analysis after a race meeting in V8 headquarters in those days, uh, world headquarters, as I love to call it, because that gave everybody the shits, um, was 
the fact that we'd sit around and we'd discuss everything that we did right and everything that we did wrong. Yep. And then we'd have the honesty to front up. And I did it numerous times to the camera and go, guys, sorry, we, we screwed the pooch on that. We got that wrong. You yeah. did. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> stick, your, because, stick your hand up. Yeah. 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 Sort it out. Correct, because people it. much prefer they that. They're not stupid. No. <laughs> so you sit there and you try and cover it up. And you try and don't, we don't speak to the media. We'll hide behind the Can't corner. Do it. Doesn't work, sorry. This is where it's good. Yeah. Re Finally. Recipe, recipe yeah. exactly. for disaster. I, I couldn't agree more. Recipe for do disaster. Do you miss it? Yeah, yeah, I do. Because it was your I, baby, you know. Like, yeah, it well, was, and I'm, you know, along with I, I do go through. And you know, the funny thing is, even still today, I would not go one week, because well, I'm still out in the public mm. a fair bit and still yeah. travel around yeah. a lot, I don't go one week without somebody bailing me up in an airport or at a footy game or somewhere going, Mate, I wish you were back running the V8s. <laughs> <laughs> it drives me nuts. I mean, seven I years old. I can't agree more. I've got a good, yeah. good question for you. And I remember this being debated when it was first muted to drop the V8 from, from V8 supercars. And I think your words were, that'll be commercial suicide if you drop the V8. Absolutely. <laughs> I still believe that today. Yeah. And, and, and what have we done? So now we've got supercars. They've all still got V8 <laughs> engines in them. Mm. Half the pub, you go to you go to Western Australia on the front headline of the paper is V8s are back. Yeah, I mean it. it <laughs> how much I, I, how much is involved I, in honestly, the brand that we've chucked away? Honestly, it's a, look. <laughs> I won't even talk V8s for the moment. I'll yeah, talk yeah, Formula yeah. One, right? Yeah. Yep. Uh, with Bernie and I had a bloody good conversation about this not that long ago. You know, the new guys come in by the widget called Formula One. Yep. So what do we got to do? Well, the first thing we have to do is we have to modernise the logo. So they go off and they spend, I don't know, two or three million dollars and it comes back with a new logo, still says Formula One, but you know, it's, a, it's all new, isn't yeah, it great? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Second thing they do, get rid of the grid girls because they're not PC anymore. Yep. But how about what the fans want? And I, I'm, you well, know- the, the tradition from the old never, logo. I was around motorsport for an awful long time, 20 odd years. And in that 20 odd years, I don't ever recall one grid girl being pushed out onto the grid. They all wanted to do it. They yeah. all wanted to be there. Yeah, they all yeah, love yeah. being part of the show, as a lot of people do. People just love being part of the show, yeah. right? And they were a really good part of the show. And as David Reynolds said, where are the drivers going to find their wives? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a good point. It's a good point. But, you know, I mean, the, the reality is all the things that have been adjusted and changed in Formula One and what's happened, yeah. the global audience has dropped 20%. Yeah. At least. Maybe not a smart move. At least, yeah. I'm being generous yeah, today. Yeah, I'm in yeah, a generous yeah, yeah. mood today. But you know, what, what, who, who's won? Who, who's won in that debate? Who's, it's like everybody talking about, you know, the manufacturers. Well, the hipsters won. and middle managers. But, but there's there's a, there's <laughs> another category as well that's been over overtaken and overrun by technology as well. Yeah, yeah. To the state now, where again, and teams have had input into this, especially Ferrari um, and uh, and McLaren, um, that. They say, well, okay, if you change the regulations, we, we're going. We can get rid of our bat and ball and going. Yeah, well. Well, maybe they should call it blood. If, you, if you, they said that to you, I know what you would have said. <laughs> yeah, I would have said, see you later, alligator. Yeah. Because you can't, you can't have. Well, they can't sell well, road cars. Well, they're not sorry, 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 I didn't mean McCart Mercedes and, and Ferrari, I mean, those two, they keep threatening because you can't change the regulations because we've got a massive advantage. They're not going Yeah, anywhere, but, but hang on. The racing's boring as yeah, hell. Yeah, but the problem is. Unfortunately or fortunately, whichever way you want to look at it, I understand some people don't like this, but the truth of the matter is motorsport of all sports actually works best when you've got a benevolent dictator in charge. I don't know why that is, but if you look at the France yep. family when they were completely yep. running yep. When they in America. Had, when they had the hand on the tiller. Yeah. Yep. Yep. You know, you go back to um, the Swiss dude who was uh, Andrew Craig, who was running IndyCar in its prime. Yep. You know, you go back to obviously Bernie's the globe, you know, he's the poster boy. <laughs> yep. Bernie in Formula One, you know, yep. and yours truly in V8s. You kind of need somebody strong on the tiller to say, right, here's the direction Isn't and that? this is why we're going in that direction. Because Which is how race successful race teams run. Correct. I mean, you don't, you don't, yeah. you don't <laughs> yeah, run a race right. team by committee. Yeah, you've got to sit no. around. You take Someone's got to make a decision. You've got to take get the on with it. information from the engineers, mechanics, and then, but it's still at the end of the day, you've got to go, uh, that's this where, is where we're going to go. Yeah. And if we no matter what. make a mistake, we'll note it, learn by it, and then go And if that you way. make a mistake, put your hand up. Yeah. Which again, how, that playbook has to be played out. That's all be purified these days. This, so you'll be on top of this, but <laughs> how relevant 
is manufacturers to supercar racing. Well, do, do we need to be? We, we've chased the manufacturers well, is, and made the sport that vanilla, trying to entice all these manufacturers in. But this is why they and got, they're not there. But, this but, is why they dropped V eight off of it. But that's why on, they he, made it supercars yeah. because they thought all these manufacturers well, are going to come in. Well, that's done with, with a capital D. Uh, with done with a capital D. Here's the truth of the matter. Yep. Even in our heyday, so. Back when Pilates was the big chief of Ford Australia, I would call that the pinnacle of Australian manufacturer yep. support of Australian motorsport. So yep, back spender. in those days, they hold them were big spenders and so mm. were Ford. We had a brief four year yep. period there where they were both having a red hot crack. But even back in those days, and it probably surprised fans to know that between the two manufacturers, they wouldn't have been spending much more than 20 mil. Yep. Between yeah, them. Okay. That's yeah. not each. Yeah, yeah. Between, between them. them. Yeah. Now that was the pinnacle. Yeah. So that's including activation. Yeah, yeah. Drivers. So, so if you look at it today, mate, you know, I'm just rolling around in laughter at the moment with TCR claiming, oh, you know, the manufacturers want this and it's going to be huge because they're yeah. going to get really involved and they're not going to get really involved. Manufacturers in Australia are not going to tip significant money into motorsport. So you've got to make motorsport as a widget in Australia stand on its own two feet. And if there's a little bit of manufacturing money, that's a bonus. Yep. But it's a bonus. Don't try and run the sport by make, what they make dictate. It a, make it a show. Make it a racing category, not a manufacturing category. You're in the entertainment business, Russ. Yeah. So you might yeah, be in the no, subdivision I'll, of motorsport, mate, but number one, you're in the I'm entertainment your, business. I'm on your track on that one. I just pump the brakes, give me a go here. Yeah, go. How come... I'll punch him out. <laughs> yeah, the AFL's drunk on manufacturing money and, and, and automotive industry money. Every manufacturer's in there, flat out. Yeah, well, it's a sport I know a bit about, obviously. Yeah. But, but look. Why are they there? Because they've got the eyeballs. No, there's one very simple reason. Yep. AFL is the number one sport in the country by a mile, countrywide. Loyal fans? Massively loyal, loyal fan fans. base. Over a million mm -hmm. members of clubs. Yep. You know, they've got the eyeballs. You know, they've got 300, 350,000 every week turn up at games. Yep. And they've got... Massive audience on TV Australia wide. That's why the manufacturers, and nearly every one of them is that. You're right. Nearly every one of them is involved. Free to air TV. Free to air TV. You've got a huge Foxtel deal yep. on TV. And got both. Got both. Yeah. Which you well, What's the culture difference, Tony, between the two? Now, now you've been involved in both. Okay. A little bit different because you're president of a club rather than overseeing the whole thing. But the culture between AFL, motorsport, any similarities or well, I, does one do one thing better than the other or it's hard to be <laughs> it's hard to be a team owner kind of thing that yeah, is yeah, being yeah. the you know yeah, the sure. overall boss um and that too what's it like being in that situation rather yeah than well, i really joined i mean with first it's an honorary position you know mm. that afl asked me to step in and because uh, i obviously lived on the gold coast for 30 odd years and i'm a really proud gold coast tell by the shirt see yeah yeah <laughs> i love that you do that too you don't wear the suit and tie you still rock the gold I know, coast i know i'm still, cool, still can't help myself can i i'll <laughs> no, get around i'll fix it up one no, day no, don't, no, don't, 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 do it. don't don't do it but yeah no they, they they you know um they're very different sports and they've got a very different fan base in lots of ways but they've got lots of commonality too and the reason why the afl have made such a success in my opinion is great management Mm. Tremendous commission, so their board who runs the sport, absolutely outstanding. Uh, and then they've got the widest fan base, so they're all about widening the pyramid all the time, the base of the pyramid all the time. And it was really no different, and if you go back and speak to, you know, the Shane Howards, the Penny Glassons, all those people that mm. worked uh, with me back in the V8 days, yep. I was all the time about wide, let's widen the pyramid base because where we got it to big numbers because we got families re-engaged. I mean, the effort that we put into cleaning Bathurst up so families could go back there <laughs> and camp, no, true. Now, that was phenomenal. I mean, and a lot of it illegal, mm -hmm. you know, what we had to do to get rid of the rat bags. Yep, but we got yep. rid of them because we wanted families back there. We wanted mum and dad to go and bring the kids and turn Bathurst into a genuine camping mm -hmm. experience so they could go and know that they were safe and yep. have a, you know, uh, yeah. have a bloody campfire yeah, yeah, yeah. and everything was and, and then more no. people came more people keep coming keep, you keep winding the base, the base the base the base the base and that's really important so we're right back where are we we're right back where we started yeah. the fans are number one priority you got to look after the fans if you don't look after the fans you've got a hard job i'm telling you i don't care who you are you've right. got a hard job so, so is there something if you put a scenario together you went back into supercars right you went back into being the main man is there anything that you've learnt through AFL that you could take from that and go, or anything out of their playbook and bring to the table? Well, firstly, before you create false hope, I don't really no, have any no, plans no, to go I, back this, to this the This is a total fictitious, fictitious thing. Yeah, fictitious is there thing. some low-hanging fruit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Is, yeah, it, I think is, there, something, is. is there something you yeah, go... Yeah, I don't, there's not any low-hanging fruit anywhere these days, but I think there are um, things that can be done and improved definitely to get the sport back up. And the very first thing you've got to do, number one, is you've got to create no difference to the AFL or the NRL. You've got to create a true free-to-air and Foxtel environment. So, in other words, you've every you round, every round, every every Simple round, cast. correct. Yep. Because without that, you disenfranchise so many potential fans. Yep. I mean, with great respect, Foxtel do a super Fox Sports do an hmm. outstanding job, and um, uh, the coverage they do is superb. Outstanding, and all the background stuff, and you know, if you're an enthusiast, all the, all, you're an enthusiast you're, that's where you go. You're glued to the TV. That's all where you weekend. go because yeah. you've got the whole remit, yep. right? But for that to really work effectively as a sport, you need the racing live on a free-to-air network, who, and a free-to-air network is really committed to promoting it, like we had seven in the old days. So you never would have done that deal, not a, in, a, as a as not a single, in a heartbeat in a. Not in a heartbeat. Not even for the six rounds at 10. You, Not, wouldn't, you wouldn't have done that deal unless it was both the whole No, because short-term gain for massive long-term pain. Yep. So you've just got to, you've got to get them to a position. You know, the TV rights dropped after I left. I mean, how the hell that happened, mm. only Billy the Goose would know. I mean, seriously, <laughs> my, dog could have turned, my, my <laughs> dog could have turned up and done a new TV rights deal that was a higher deal than the last deal I did. Right? But what did they do? They went down for two years. They didn't go up, they went down and dramatically down for two years. So they put themselves behind the eight ball. But you've got, you've got, you can't disenfranchise fans. No. And it, the, the current TV arrangements, loosely, yep. are disenfranchising yep. fans. That's a disaster. And I, I'll debate that with anybody, anywhere, yep. however they like. And I'm right and they'll be wrong. Is it repairable? Everything's repairable. Everything's repairable mm. because uh, there's one great, and that's why I signed a 35-year deal, and everybody at the time mm. had a real laugh at me. 35 years, Cocker, you are fucking great. <laughs> and we had a lot of debate about it around the board table and a lot of argument. Everything in, I'll still call it V8 Supercar, everything in V8 Supercar is fully repairable because of one magic word. And this is one thing oh, I was very wrong be. on, Bathurst. Bathurst. <laughs> I, I made a stupid statement really early in the piece. I said, there's no sacred sites. I was absolutely 100% wrong. Mind you, in fairness, I knew I was wrong and I was playing to, you know, a market. Mm -hmm. I was playing to try and steal it away. But we signed a 35-year deal at Bathurst because Bathurst is the holy grail of Australian motorsport in the same way that Indianapolis yeah, is in America, yep. in the same way Daytona is mm. in America, yeah, in yeah. the same way Monaco is to Formula oh, One. Right. Yep. 100%. Bathurst right. is special. That's I'll it. get a chill up my spine just saying that word. Every time you drive into the joint. <laughs> you, you two have both won it. I mean, I've never had the, you know, if I had to try and win it, they have to turn it into a 48 yeah. hour race. <laughs> but um, It is, it's a special place. It's special. Absolutely, it's, it's, couldn't it's, agree more. You know, I remember that, that my last time up there, um, uh, Scafi, which was really decent of him, he knew it was I was out the door and mm -hmm. going. Um, he took me on a lap around a bit before the race, and I still can relive every second of that lap. You know, it was just something really special. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, the crowd and giving you shit and having to go at you and and everything. But it's what made it all worthwhile. Well, it's, it's yeah. funny while you were in the chair, I think you were one of the most divisive people, people either loved you or hate, hated you. Oh, that's Probably true. more so hated. But oh, yeah, they settled. But then, yeah, but- We have 50-50 no. here, please. <laughs> but, but, when you went out of the, but when you went out of the saddle, all of a sudden, people were going, you know, like years later, Tony, come back, please come back. Now you're the most loved. So <laughs> most it's, loved. It's, it's amazing the town around. Stop it, my hair's going back. I know. Uh, look, it's been great to have you, but there's one more part to this whole deal and having you on the show. It's the, like the stuff. The check. The, no, no there, there is no check. Oh, yeah, here's a check and it's <laughs> yeah, blank. Right? Yeah, that'd be right. The star in their car. That'd so right. so the two we, we, asked you, we asked you to bring, we don't know what it is, we've asked you to bring a car along yeah. that reflects your personality. And this is going to well, be. Well, the first thing in that statement, of course, is you assume I've got more than one car. 
well, you're a car guy, mate. Yeah, you are yeah. a car guy. So, so yeah. I have done more but than it one was, car, it, so luckily we're it, was, it was your it was, it was your choice. It was your choice what to bring. We didn't prompt you on any of this. So, this is your choice to bring. So, you're going to surprise us. So, let's go outside, right? Yeah. And we'll wrap this up. We're going to see your car and see what sort of personality Tony Cochran really has. Well, Right. As I wrote once in a column, I'm a closet fan of this mark and always have been and okay. uh, love them. Had a big Fantastic. passion, a big love of them all my life. And, all right. And, uh, don't tell us, don't tell us. Yeah, okay. Don't tell us. Let's go outside and have a look. All right. Thanks, boys. Good on you, Been mate. fun. So what do you reckon, Paul? What do you reckon Tony Cochran has got for a drive car? I'm tipping a Prius. I reckon a Jaguar or a Peugeot or something like that. Oh, serious? Yeah. What about one of those Pope Mobile looking Land Rover things? Because you know what he'd be like. He likes sitting, sitting up on up a pedestal. Above the crowd. Yeah, he likes being above everyone. Yeah. Do you reckon it'd be something like that? I reckon it'd be something like that. Yeah, I don't know. A bit of a hipster. I don't know. Just He's a hard one to pick. He's a hard. <laughs> no way. Why are you looking worried? No hey. way. No way. That's unbelievable, mate. I would have never picked that, Tony Cochran. The oh, bullet. Well. Why were you worried? Well, because you're driving. That's why I worried. Yeah, good point. Can't bullet, argue that. Bullet edition Mustang. I, I picked a Prius. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I I picked a that's a lot. <laughs> when you used to have a Jaguar, I thought you might still have one of those. No, I don't know. I've got rid of well, the Jags. You're the godfather of the V8s, and you've got one of the best V8s ever made. So yeah, I'm a pretty clo cool. closet um, Mustang fan, of as have been, so. And what a cool movie too. Great movie, the old, uh, uh, one of the this is our 40th anniversary edition of The Bullet. Bullet, yeah. Steve McQueen. Has it got the white gear knob? Back in the days when men were men, got the white gear knob. Really? Got the, the old <laughs> billiard ball knob, yeah. I, I, the real honestly, deal. you've blown me away. I'm sure, I'm sure well, all the punters too are gonna be impressed. <laughs> no, but I was I was expecting, I, I thought you'd be in one of those Pope Mobile looking Land Rovers, you know. I got one of those as well. Oh, so gotta have a Don't tell cars. me that, don't, don't kill the moment. No, don't kill, don't this, 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 this is, is a the cool car. car. Yeah, this is a car. And what a great this movie too. Steve McQueen, one of the iconic actors of all time. And if anyone hasn't seen the movie Bullet, got to see it. Yeah, but everybody who watches your show would have seen Bullet. Would have seen Bullet. <laughs> no, I mean, it's yeah. compulsory, isn't it? Yeah, because they're all cool. Compulsory, There's a connection yeah. here too, mate. Yeah, there is there actually. Is. Old... Yeah, so Frank Gardner, who built this complex, yeah. he built and did all the stunt driving for, for Bullet. Is that right? Yeah, he was Steve McQueen's stunt double. There you go, small world. <laughs> right. right here. Right here, mate, yeah. We didn't do the stunt driving for Bullet yeah, right yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. in San Francisco. Oh, well, that's, so. that's very yeah. fitting. That's yeah. very, well, I'm Tony Cochran. I'm very, very impressed. Thank you very much for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. Uh, I think you've ruffled a few feathers, but... Oh, I doubt yeah. that. I don't have any feathers left to rust. <laughs> I think there's a little bit left in you, though. Yeah, it's great, great to have you on. I really appreciate you coming on, and uh, I'm sure the punters would have uh, got a fair insight. Can, we have, can I have a drive it? No, because oh. you'll rip up the tyres out and you'll bullshit track me. I'll wake up to Good you. move, good move. Yeah. Yeah, I'm oh. poor these days, mate, oh. so I can't oh. afford okay. new tyres all the time. Oh. Good on you. Go on, get out of here, Tony. Thanks okay. for coming on. See Thanks, you, mate. lads. Cheers, good. buddy. How good was it to have TC on the show? Seriously, he's... Uh, He's straight down the barrel, isn't he? Yeah, it's good to have a straight shooter around, oh, isn't it? Just oh, a sanity for, check. No, for sure. I'll tell you what. Um, I think uh, I think our viewers will uh, pick up a little bit off that. They will. They'll yeah. understand why supercars, or V8 supercars, were so great, and he was the main reason behind it. Absolutely, absolutely. Right, yeah, let's get on with the rest of the show. Cool. PM. Um, as promised, we're going to bring you some categories which probably don't get enough love, and something that's close to your heart, because you raced it for a long time, Speedway. Speedway. A lot well, of requests for Speedway. Yeah. My first ever race car was a, a, a bomber at Surface Paradise Speedway when I was 17. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I love racing on the dirt. Such a good alternate training ground, too, for young kids, which, which we'll get into as well. Yeah. But there's been some major events as well. And uh, the Toowoomba recently had the Queensland State Sprint Car titles yep. as well. Yep. And uh, that's a, it was a, a pretty well... Pretty good field too. There's some hitters. So Queensland titles, it's a um, one event title. It's not a not a, a series of points. So yep. and you get some hitters turn up from from interstate and try and all the Sydney pick, guys come Sydney up. Sydney come yep. up and, and put it on. So Lockie so, McHugh won that one. Yeah, which which is great. Um, Lockie's a young guy, it's karting karting background. Didn't have enough money to go road racing. Went went dirt racing. His dad's got a huge. Actually, he would have raced against Jamie in Formula Ford yeah, back in the day. Yeah, his dad, yeah. 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 
And then yeah, Jamie, Jamie went dirt racing, yeah. uh, Australian champion in uh, super sedans, and now Lockie's in there as well. And yeah, he's a hard charger, man. He's 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 one of the probably Australia's best drivers. Yeah, no, it was a good it was a good and fitting too. I mean, I've been out at Archerfield a couple of times, and yeah. Jeez, he charges hard coming through the field when he has to. Yeah, he gets up the <laughs> oh, and yeah. gets amongst it. He's not scared. No, no, no. <laughs> and, and it was really good to see. Um, look, we should give, um, because we, we haven't spoken about it, and, um, and, and considering I know Andrew Shell very well yeah. uh, with the Ausdeck group and the Castrol-sponsored team as well, um, he, he won the national titles this year after 25-odd years behind yeah. the wheel. And Pretty the cool. And the first Queenslander to do it since Todd Wanless back in correct. 97, 96, yeah, 97. Correct. Tom Wanless was it? Todd Wanless, yeah, who yeah. is the sponsor of our, oh, yeah. for our for our cars that we bash up around here. Yeah, the bash up cars, Tom <laughs> so Wanless, official of Quince- sponsor. Yeah, official yeah. sponsor. So, yeah, good for Andrew Shirley, yeah, good for great. Ozdek. Yeah. Good, good to see him get an Australian title, at, at, which is the back end of his of his career, but he, he's still wheeling pretty hard. It's, it was amazing after that long as well, because you start... You know, and I know Andrew very well when he was saying, oh, you know, he's just going year by year at the moment. Yep. To suddenly win the Australian title after that long and at his age, it's a pretty good effort. That's fantastic. Against, fantastic against, against, against some quality steerers. Yeah, there's, there's massive amounts of sprint cars in Australia and, and uh, you know, those guys can beat Donny Schatz on the night when he comes to, to yep. Australia. So, you know, the light... Anywhere you go and race a sprint car, you can turn up anywhere in the world and you can be the best at the world and turn up to the local yeah. track. You better have your own game on yeah. to beat the local guy, <laughs> you know? Hey, you're talking about uh, Donny Schatz. Yeah. Uh, I don't know whether you knew this at all, but um, Andrew Sherl was having a lot of troubles with his chassis. Yeah, he agreed. They, they had one of old Donny Schatz's, which, um, uh, which Stuart Craig actually bought, who owns Ozdek. Yeah. And just had sitting up on a mezzanine. Yeah, a bit like that one there. Yeah, just a, yeah, yeah, just just a bit of memorabilia. Yeah, yeah. And they had troubles with the chassis, and they sort of looked up and gone, "Oh, well, look, let's grab that one." So they grabbed it down, ran it at a meeting before the Australian uh, yeah. the national title. I was actually there when it right, happened. Right. Yeah. And, and then that's the car that he actually won in. So it's one of Donny Shots' old cars. Yeah, and and a guy called Lanny Nichols was pretty instrumental in doing that. So he's Donny's best mate. He yep. comes out from South Dakota. And they stay at my joint, and they, they race the car over the um, over the their winter break, which yeah, is yeah, our yeah. summer. And then Lanny was like, "Why don't you get the J and J out, and I'll help you out with a bit of setup stuff." And they got in that car, and it was it sort of got he, them going. He loved the chassis. Yeah, it was really good. Yeah. So he really but it was getting the right information to do with it. Today. So critical in <laughs> yeah. speedway, isn't it? Yeah. I, would you say it's almost more critical in speedway than on bitumen on dirt to get in because because the track on bitumen, you know what you got. The yeah. track's out there, it doesn't alter unless it rains. You know, with Speedway, the track's altering throughout the whole night, just changing every time. Yeah, well, you'll start off with a track that's 11 seconds that you're racing for qualifying, yeah. and then you're doing 14s and 15s and by the time the feature race comes along. So it slows down, the yeah. grip level goes down. That's why the racing's so good, because the grip level's down. So you're chasing it the whole, whole you're night. You're predicting. You're yeah, predicting yeah. what you're going to say. You go, well, I'm looking at the track. I think that's what it's going to be like by the time I get back out there. Yeah. And that's what. And that's doing. the difference between the, the guys that know what they're doing is chasing that setup. The chasing whole night. the setup and being able to forecast ahead what you're going to need. It's so intricate. I, yeah. I love speedway. I reckon it's 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 such a good format and it's a really good place to go. I reckon for young kids as well because they've got some great um, learning categories. Yeah, junior well. categories. Is junior good. sedans. Yeah, junior sedans are great. Ten uh, years of old. Ten years of age. Yeah, you can get out there. You can go there. Yep. Yeah. That's incredible. Like, and that's what Lockie McHugh came through. I think he went. Uh, went, uh, he was mod lights. Genius. I yeah. think he did genius, genius sedans, mod lights. mod lights, and sprint cars. So mod lights is a thousand cc. Yeah, motor, motorcycle motorbike engine, Suzuki engine. A bit like an Aussie race car on the dirt. Aaron Seaton raced yeah, mod he lights raced as well. It. Yep. Yeah, um, he did. And uh, I, I think Speedway for for someone, everyone looks at going to bitumen straight away. But number one, it's expensive, and number two, I think you learn better car control on the dirt. Of actually how to handle a car and. And, and especially racing, wheel to wheel racing. Well, you definitely you, you, you definitely learn learn about uh, car handling. You definitely learn about car control, and yeah. I think you learn that you know you can steer the steer the car with the brake and the throttle, not the steering wheel, which which is something yeah, that, yeah, yeah. that takes a long time to learn on the asphalt. But because the grip level is a bit lower on the on the dirt, you, you've got yeah. to pick that up pretty quickly. Absolutely, and when and when you can get a when you can get something for like fifteen to twenty k, gets you gets you racing. Gets you out there in a mod like car. That's pretty cheap racing, the whole scheme of things. It, it is. Um, and the tracks you can go to as well. So, yeah. Yep. 
You know, you can drive two or three hours and pick up four or five different racetracks. Or if you want to go for a big tour and go into state, there's you know you can race your way all race around race. Australia. So no, I reckon it's such it's such a good category, and and anyone that wants to enter motor racing, I reckon they should actually have a really good look at that. I think it's a good avenue. Don't you know? Just don't think you have to get on the black stuff. No, the brown stuff's sure. pretty good too. Hey, uh, we're going to talk a bit about Aussies and New Zealanders overseas. Yep, as well, because I don't reckon they get enough. I don't reckon they get their tyres pumped up enough. There's a ton of them over there, and they're doing so well. And, yeah. and we'd be here for another hour if we mentioned all of them. But uh, after weekend, look, we cannot go through and not mention Remy Gardner. What a big so, off! Though. Seriously, that was a massive off, wasn't it? Massive yeah, high side. Massive off, and, and he's he's got his dad's determination, hasn't he? <laughs> like he just won't give up, and then getting really competitive and having that that big shunt. It's uh, it was scary stuff. So cold rear tyre. Coming out off the start, first bend, first right hand. He's coming out. He's gassed her up. Yep. She stepped, flung him over the bars. But I tell you what, what happened after that was unbelievable. Bikes flinging over, dudes getting run over. Yeah. Like, like it could have been so much worse than what it was. And there's a few parallels there to Wayne's career early on 500s of people getting run over and that. And and I think if you look at Wayne's Twitter account, he, he said something like it. It's pretty spooky, but if he's Got his dad's determination, which I know he has. He'll be back. He's, good. he's doing a really good job. Yeah, like he's actually surprised me because yeah. Moto Two is a, a seriously competitive, yeah, like, he's doing like a great it's job. massively competitive, and they ride those things so loose, like they're just out of control. So he's done really well. He actually wanted to. He still was concussed. Wanted to well, get, get back, back on the bike. <laughs> Which they, they didn't him. It's like, <laughs> I'm all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm all right. Let me do it. But they held him back. They said, No, nah, no, nah, you're out, dude. Yeah. So, uh, but good on him for having a big stab at it. Um, uh, really good. Hey, speaking of some of our overseas guys, Jack Doohan. Really Another well. win. Uh, Asian F3 up in Thailand. Correct. So yep. two second place. Won the second race. Um, so great, great for him as well. He's doing a, uh, he's doing a good job over there. He is doing a good job. And the, and the thing I like it about it is he, he's. You know, they're stepping up. They're not just trying to... I mean, they could have thrown him in European F3. It's a tough, tough deal. Yeah, he's like, got a race in Powell. Powell next? Have you yeah, yeah, in Powell, F3? No, Powell? no, no. I raced in uh, Macau. Yeah. I raced in... Yeah, Macau, I raced in Monaco. Well, that's Never his raced first, first street race coming up next weekend in Europe. So That, that joint's out of control. It's be good to see how it's he, like racing how he around your there. driveway at home. It's really, it? Yeah, yeah, it's really tight. It's really tight. But it's good that he's going to sample that as well. Yeah. But the Asian Championship's still really strong as well. Yeah, so, some hitters in there um, for sure. And, and F3's a tough category. So, um, so good on Jack. It looks like he's got his... Um, it's, it's funny that he's gone down that road, isn't it, of four wheels. Of four and wheels? No interest. Well, we're just talking about Remy Gardner. Yeah. And Remy's gone two wheels and, and just got motorbikes in his head. Where Jack's never really had that... Oh, he's still... Yeah. I think he enjoys riding bikes, but I... For what I think... It's of strange, it, though, from what your dad is. Your dad's a world... Yeah, but if you, do you want your kid falling off a MotoGP bike or driving no, a car? No, not at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's going to have a lot less shrapnel in jars sitting on his mantelpiece. And if you look... I think he was more... Like, Mick Dewan and Michael Schumacher were very good, very good friends. Yep. So... Uh, there's a reason Mick Schumacher is called Mick Schumacher. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's after Mick. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I, oh, okay. from a young age, yeah. I think Jack Doohan, I know Jack Doohan was very inspired by Michael, so that's why he went that two-wheel Is that route. right? Yeah. Oh, it's interesting. Yeah. No, no, it's good. It's good that he's taken his own avenue. Yes. Because it's quite easy to want to follow in your dad's footsteps. I reckon it's pretty cool that he's gone, no, nah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to groove out something of my own and yeah. go four-wheel. So. And if you mean him, he's a very determined young man. Like, he's... Yeah. he's <laughs> Well, well, you need to be. He needs to be in that, yeah. in that he, environment. He's a very, he's a class act. Yeah. So. No, that's good. Yeah. And uh, look, we we got to make mention as uh, as well. There's there's quite a few Kiwis over there. Uh, Marcus Armstrong, who's racing in the FIA Formula Three Championship as well. Yeah. He bagged a couple of top five results, and FIA Formula Three, like that's it. She's she's she, world she's, championship. she's right up there, and and he's been strong in the. Um, Toyota Racing Series in New Zealand as well. So Alex Priney as well is also racing in that series. Yeah. Uh, so, like I said, there's a, there's a there's a massive mixture when you when you look at all the Aussies that are over there and uh, and having a big stab. It's pretty cool. Like and, and and we're talking you know future F1 champions here. So yeah, I, th I think Earl Bamber won the IMSA race yeah. the week before as well. So the, they're nice, all doing nice, well. Nice guy, Earl. I, yeah, he's I a good like guy, yeah, so He's got it. a different story too. How he ended up being a factory Porsche driver. That's we've got to get him on the show, and he's got to tell us that story. Yeah, oh, really nice. It's a great I, story. I interviewed him when he was out here when he did the Enduros. 
yeah. uh, for Shane Van Gisbergen. Really, really nice guy. Like, like, and, and a serious talent. Like, uh, I was talking to Roland Dane about him. And within 10 laps, never driven this thing before, within 10 laps he was down to Shane's time. Yeah, Just got it. out and got out, no fuss. Yeah, yeah, everything's good. He's a wheel man. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Hey, um, let's get on to the uh, grassroots segment. Big announcement, everyone. Drum roll. All right. We got what have you pulled off? Oh, we got our first sponsor. Really? <laughs> yeah, we got, we got a sponsor for the grassroots segment. Right? Okay, okay. Yeah, and, and um, very appropriate too, Greenfield Mowers. Oh, Could you get any better? That's fantastic. Yeah, Greenfield Mowers. Have, Local uh, company? Yeah, absolutely. They've come on board. Um, and roll back the clock, Greenfields yeah. were with uh, Cameron, Cameron McLean. McLean. Yeah. Used to actually be involved in V8s. Yeah, so they started, cars, I think they started supercars. off with his super touring BMW yeah. and into his V8 campaign. And I reckon they were a big supporter of Jim Richards there for a while as well. Correct. Yeah. They were too. So they've actually been involved in motorsport for, well, got a motorsport heritage for a lot of years. So, so the really, lawns will really be looking cool. pretty good at your joint. The lawns will be, I reckon the lawns will be looking real good around Norwell too <laughs> with a couple of their great ride-ons. So uh, fantastic to have them on board as Thank well. You. And like I said, really appropriate uh, section too because the grassroots section is segment is about categories that don't usually get a lot of love and, uh, and that's what it's all about. So that's great. Great to have you on board. Fantastic. Greenfield Mowers, very, very nice indeed. And for this segment, we're going to talk about something that's been very dear to our hearts over the years, Formula Ford. Oh, yeah. 50th anniversary this year yeah. of Formula Ford. It's, that's fantastic. What a fantastic category, Paul. Like, seriously, um, it's, it's produced so many champions. Look across the board where, um, oh, where, where do you want to start? Do you want to start Formula One? Uh, IndyCar, supercars, you name it across the board, a lot of them, a lot of the stars have come out of Formula Ford. Oh, I think everyone really has, you know, it's, it's, and it's a category that hasn't really changed much over the years. It's, we've had a few engine developments, but the cars are basic, basically the same as, the, as they were. And I think the things that, that makes it so good as a car to drive is it's, it's not aero dependent. Yeah. So you learn a lot about setup, you learn a lot about Ride height, spring rates, anti-roll bars, brake bias. Mechanical grip. Mechanical grip. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you've got to race wheel to wheel and, and show a bit of respect on the racetrack. So still surviving around the world. And Australia's probably still got the biggest uh, number of Formula Ford still competing. Now, it's not a national championship recognised by CAMS anymore. No. They dropped them a yeah, few well, CAMS, years ago. CAMS started pushing um, F4. Right. And in that strategy... Um, Formula Ford got dropped off as a national championship, yep. but it, it hasn't really affected the numbers. Not at all. Not at all. So the, the people still know that if you want to learn to drive a race car, go and get a Formula Ford. Um, and you can still do it with your, with your dad in a toolbox on the back of a trailer and be competitive. That's what's so good about it. You can run at state level, you can run at the national level, but the national level now, which is what the, well, the national series, mm. A couple of the races are sponsored by AASA and the rest are at CAMS events, so... So it is, yeah, it's building <laughs> it's back a bit in of a, again. It's a oh, bit of a split. Well, it's a shame, con considering it is, well, always, always has been an international category. Um, it's a shame that it's not recognised fully as a national championship, but they're still getting 30-odd cars lined up for the national events. Yeah. That's a good field. That's a really good field. Great racing. And, and you're getting people like, um, well, you look at someone like Hunter McElroy. Andy, Andy McElroy, who runs... In it's the, in a great the, story, isn't in, it? ...in the Porsche series. Um, Andy, his dad, runs uh, a couple of Porsches uh, very successfully in the Carrera yeah. Cup. And Andy was a New, Ze and, uh, New Zealand Formula Ford champion. Yep, yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. So his son, Hunter, is taken on Formula Fords, won the championship last year, Yep. Uh, is now in the US um, F2000 series. And he won that States. on merit. So by winning the Australian Formula Ford championship, he, he got invited to yep. the US and it was competition based and he's yep. actually won a drive so yeah that's uh, what, so, a, what a great story so and Formula Ford's doing way more for people in racing than, than Formula 4 will ever do well a lot of other categories if yeah. you're looking I think it's still the go-to category it is as far as training and, and Hunter's proved that that if he's going over in the US and and winning over there yeah getting podiums straight in, in his first year uh, that's that's pretty. That's, that's a lot of street cred. It is for sure. Yeah, so it's a, it's a stepping stone. So I got on Formula Ford, and uh, I reckon um, there'll be a few pictures you'll see flashing up of uh, some of our old old photos. Well, I remember you turned up 
the first time I met you, you had a, I think you had a white XD panel van. Yeah, that's right. With a trailer, trailer on, the, on back, the back and you and Bobby Smith. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, trailer on the back. So two driving. blokes yep, yep. running a Formula Ford. And we were trailer you, racers. You were trailer racers and, yep. and you guys were were the guys to beat. Yeah, so. yeah, you'll be you'll be seeing a couple <laughs> of images pop up now of some of our <laughs> some of our exploits. And uh, Paul used to look like a young Elvis Presley. <laughs> like yeah. it was, it was, geez, it was good times though. I mean, some of the stuff we used to get up to there. But the racing was so good. And like I said, training ground because uh, it was it was hardcore. You, you know, you no messing around in the races. No, no, we just raced pretty hard, and but it never really we never really came to blows. No, no. no. Well, you couldn't. You get wheels yeah, hanging out wheels there. Wheels hanging and, out. And, and when you do, you turn the thing into a canoe. Yeah. So it's, you know, there's plenty of incentive not to, especially if you're paying your own bills, which a lot of us was in those days. And yeah, uh, yeah so it's great. So it's great to acknowledge Formula Ford. Fantastic category. Great that it's still going strong. And uh, like I said, I think personally it should be should be recognised by CAMS as, back as a national championship and, and hopefully boosted a little bit more with some incentive for drivers to get overseas, especially with prize money and that sort of thing. Well, it's, 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 it's stupid that it's not because because no. that's where our drivers are coming from. Yep. And and you've you look at Cam's Instagram, and they they're claiming that these drivers have come through Formula Four, mm. and they've done one or two races in it, and then gone on to supercars. So and, yeah. and Cam's are trying to take the credit for training the drivers in a Formula Four to drive a drive a supercar. Yeah. Like whoever's running that Instagram account can't has no idea what that driver's done beforehand. It's yeah. just ridiculous. Yeah, no, no, couldn't, couldn't pump their tires up enough and it's great to see, still see successful. Yeah. Uh, okay, we've had a, um, a lot of uh, comments come in and uh, what we thought is, we can't answer all of them obviously, because yep. I mean, I think the first couple of shows was 5,000 plus comments <laughs> that's come through the two, two platforms. Uh, so we've, we've picked half a dozen. We're gonna try and quickly roll through them and give you some answers to some questions. So to our first viewer, comment or question. Mark Elborn, can you elaborate on the artificial passing of the F1 DRS system? Love the COG test, dude, for having the stones to do that. I, I agree with that. You've got big stones doing that one. Uh, yes, what I meant by that comment was that I, I think DRS, which means the flap of the wing, once you get within a second of the car in front in Formula One, uh, after th Lap three. Lap three, I think. Lap three yeah. or something like that. The top wing plane goes flat, gives you more straight speed to help you overtake the car. To me, that's artificial passing. The correct thing they should be doing is pull the aero off of Formula One cars, like they do with IndyCar and did years ago. Yep. IndyCar racing is fantastic. Pull all the aero off, you won't have to have artificial, I call it artificial, passing. 100%. In right. Formula One. And what supercars should be considering about doing, and what I believe they must have been listening to us, I believe they're doing the same thing going to pour the aero off by about 30 odd plus percent. Right thing to do. Righto, dude, you're yep. on. Okay, who we got next? John Madalena. I read supercars are looking into cutting back the air on the cars are, are producing. Is this a coincidence or because you mentioned it in episode two? <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> we just covered it off. Uh, I think it's a coincidence. I think it's a coincidence. No, don't, hey, hey, don't deflate our tyres. Huh? <laughs> don't deflate our tyres. Yeah, there, there's... There's some smart people in team land and whatever, and I, I think um, everyone's thinking thinking that, you know, everyone's thinking that. But the aero has, we, prove, we we know for sure the aero has sneaked up on the cars, on supercars. Yeah, and they all know it. It's just um, the only person that wouldn't be worried about it right now would be Penske, DJR. All the other teams would be like, oh, let's get some aero back off the, ca back off the cars. So yep. That's yep. where it's Agreed. coming from. But they should go in that direction, though. No matter what, especially if they're going to start altering the chassis. They're going in that direction, mate. Yeah, okay. They've got to. Oh, they have to. They have especially to. Especially if they're going to chop the chassis up to suit other two-door cars. Yep. Fix that as well while they're at it. Yep. No doubt about it. Okay, on to our next one, which is from Matthew Blackmat Hilda. Uh, can you explain the twin-turbo V6 crap that's yeah. supposed to happen to supercars? Is it still going ahead? Paul. Well, it's really a marketing thing, really, that... Uh, Holden were, weren't were wanted to use that engine yep. because uh, it was a world engine. They believed that they could put an engine in a car. It was was being run in the Cadillac in America. Mm. They were pulling, trying to pull some costs out if they could get a common engine in the car, relate it back to what's now being in the road car. Yep. It, it would work. It didn't work that way though, did it? Uh, it it's going to be more expensive. It was the time they started developing it yep. and then trying to put it in into our operation. It just 
was, was going to be too expensive yeah. and that thing oh, had to get boned. I'm glad they boned it because, again, if you're trying to follow market relevance as well, they've moved on for V6 now. They, it's all hybrid and that sort of thing. Keep it a V8 formula. V8. I think we've just worked that one out. Uh, well, yeah, well, yeah. No, I mean, from previous comments, yeah. especially from TC. But that's what happened. It was Make a, it a was racing a, category. It was, you know? it was marketing people making technical decisions. Exactly. Don't do that. Don't do that. Leave the technical <laughs> decisions up to technical people. Yeah. Right. Okay. On to the next one. Andrew Monks. All the Aussie motor, motor sounds like I spelt that, magazines yeah. seem to be watching and quoting your comments. Oh, I haven't seen Oh, that. thank you, Andrew. Do people read magazines anymore? Oh, I know, but they've been watching the show. Oh, good. And getting. So, so I, we're, I we're influencers, mate. Oh, we're, oh, we're, <laughs> we're social media influencers. I oh, no, oh, no. I mean, Print media influencers. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. We should get some t-shirts made up of we that. We should. Hey, by the way, about t-shirts too, we've had a lot of people inquiring about that Enforcer t-shirt that I wore yeah. on the last episode. That's where, original. Where can you buy it? That was an original one. That was one back, I uh, some merchandise I did myself back in the Perkins days, I think. I just did it on my own, down a few extra quid. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so I have a brand new one in the packet, so I'm, I'm actually wearing all retro shirts. So I'm going to go through all my old stuff and wear some retro stuff, but... You're going to do a reprint? Well, merchandise might be a nice way, dude. Yeah, a lot of people have been asking for merchandise, so... Yeah, yeah, so Enforcer and the Dude merchandise. Um, Once we uh, get a start. breath, we'll get into it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, we're flat out bringing the show to you, so but we will get to it, so um, have no fear. Rightio, here we go, Luke, Northeast. There you go, dude, it's all yours. Well, that's that's a great one. Should do a segment on how drivers progress up to supercars. We're interested in how much it comes to talent or dollars. Well, you need both. Well, you're sort of doing that here, aren't you, with your driver train? Yeah, well, I think the the test case is probably Anton. Yep. Um, yeah, very Anton limited. Anton Yeah, yep. so very limited budget. How we were going to get him into supercars, we had to do it quickly. We had to do it in two years, or he was out of dough. Yep. Um, we got some some good people around him to help. A lot of people pitched in to help to to get him there, uh, and. I reckon if we did a case study on that, that would work out right. But you, you're going to need to get to a, to a pretty solid level. So if you're in Australia right now, the, what you want to be doing is Formula Ford to R86, one of those two yep. things, uh, getting some sponsorship around you, trying to get into Super 3, Super 2, and try and get through that in two or three years. But you're, Still you're, expensive. You're still going to need a couple of million bucks to get that done. So, 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 and that's the unfortunate, and, and that's the cruel thing about it. That's the cruel thing about motorsport is it's not like tennis or cricket. Your equipment is such an expensive part of the whole profession yeah. that it's just difficult. And there's been so many drivers end up in the skip bin because of money that are re- would have been really talented drivers, but they just didn't have the budget together. But it's just a cruel sport. At the end of it. I don't know what the fix is, to be honest. Well, you've just got to have your act together in every 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 aspect of, of motor racing now. You've yep. got to be good out of the car. You've got to be good at networking. Yep. You've got to be good at getting people emotionally attached to what you're doing because yep. at a young age, there's, and in those minor my, categories, my, yeah, yeah. the commercial return for the sponsor's not there, so it's an emotional attachment. That's a really good point. That's a really good point about how you conduct yourself outside the car. Yeah. And not enough drivers concentrate on that. That's what I see. They think just winning races or getting results is going to be enough. It's not. You've got to be commercially viable outside. You've got to have a profile. You can't just, I mean, so, honestly, some of the, some of the motorsport people, and, and I won't segment it to one brigade, but that as soon as they've got a microphone in front of them, it's cringeworthy. Yeah. You think, get some media training. <laughs> you know, get some media training. Learn how to talk, like, and get it a bit out there. And, you know, and, it's a fine know, line a because you, you've got the corporate world and you're still trying to be yourself. So, yeah. But let's do a segment on it. Absolutely, we should uh, do that. We'll do yeah, a segment we'll do on it, it yeah. and put some information around it and show you a couple of different pathways of getting there. Yeah, It'd that's, be a, a great that's thing actually to do. real. Thank, thanks for your thanks, comment Luke. on that. Yeah, we'll, on you. we'll do that. And uh, Michael Passfield, uh, is cost the main factor when they don't make the twin spring standard and why go backwards in performance? Okay, um, I'll grab this one because we did that tech piece, which everyone seemed to enjoy about the twin spring that we yeah. threw in uh, in between shows. And... Uh, we're going to be doing more of these tech pieces. Paul's going to be bringing you the next one. So look out for that one. That's in between each show. We're going to do a tech segment as well. Uh, the springs, look, the springs themselves actually quite cheap. Yeah, it's, it's the labour content. Yeah, it's, it is the labour <laughs> content. And 
Uh, there's probably two reasons is because again there was probably one guy, one or two people on each team that were dedicated in that truck just winding sprint platforms up and down. Yeah, they're on the rig there, they're, and, they're crunching numbers on the rig so oh. it's, it's one less person you've got to take to the track. And they would have been so happy that they don't have to do that anymore. Or, or a lot less because it was it's a painful process. There's nothing glamorous about winding springs up and down. So there'd be one in, one mechanic on every team going, great, I don't have to do that anymore. So that's a consideration, it's a labour factor, uh, not so much of the cost of the spring. Yeah, and, as well. and bigger teams, not really an impact. But if you're, you're a single car team, you've got to employ another person, take them so to great, the track, yeah. da, 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 da. you add that all up, it's probably a hundred grand a year yeah. saving easy. So, so, that, so that, that's the saving in it, yeah. uh, but also the performance aspect, because the twin spring, when you got it wrong, your car handled like an absolute dog. So the difference between the haves and the have nots was quite great between who got that twin spring right. So take that out of the equation and that's leveled the playing field. It's I reset. I think we've seen that. Yep. So that's another factor. There's a performance factor and the cost factor. And I think by throwing it out, one linear spring, bang, off you go. Off you go, so there you go. Great comment. It goes back to what Tony said. The fans in this that, crowd don't know the difference. Don't, right. so, no, he, he was spot on. Fans don't care what, what well, damn springs are in the car. car. They, they, yeah. I'm sure they don't sit there with their popcorn in their, in their yeah. coat going, oh, that twin spring's working really well. Not Seriously, no, yeah. no, not even. Uh, so that's it. Really great comments. Keep them coming in uh, and, we'll, and we'll try and get through. Re really appreciate it. Um, and, and like I said, don't forget we're going to be doing these short tech pieces in between. So look out on them in between shows every week. So we're gonna try and keep something coming at you every single week. Um, we're gonna be back on track. We're yes. gonna do some track stuff. We've got some cool stuff. We, we've had a few inquiries about race tactics and all Race that tactics, driver coaching, and, and just to give you a little bit of what we're gonna do, Russ was the best guy at passing and getting through the field. You didn't get the name The Enforcer because you're a lovely bloke. <laughs> there was a few tricks in doing it. And, you had a few and, tricks and you, in doing you, you it. You upset a few people along the way. But but you handled it well. But I, in this environment, yep. with the amount of cameras in the cars and the amount of scrutiny on the drivers, Couldn't get away with you'd be stuck mid-pack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're gonna, sh we're gonna show yeah. you. But we're not gonna show yeah. you on a TV, a blackboard, a whiteboard. We're gonna show you live. We're going to go out on the track, so we'll do it in a couple we of We might seconds. need to get Todd Wanderers to get us a few more cars. I think we're going to have to have a few bang up cars because this could get ugly too, because we're going to show you clean tactics and we're going to show you dirty tactics as well too, two different episodes. So look out for that one. So we're back on track again on the next episode. Great show. Um, great to have our first guest with Tony Cochran. Man, he, was, uh, he speaks his mind, which is great. Dude, it's dude's life message. Take well, it away. This one, I'm inspired by you and your racing career yeah. and by Tony's business career. And it's things come to those that go and get them. Okay, things come to those who go get them. Yep. Yeah, I've got to agree with that. <laughs> yep, if you sit on the bench, you ain't going to get it. No, well, you went off to Europe, packed your bag and raced and raced all over the world. Yep. What Tony's a self-made man and uh, it's a good message there. Good for all you young guys out there. Dude's life message. Yep. Go get them. <laughs> Uh, that's it. Great show. Absolutely fantastic. Can't wait for the next one. Uh, thanks to everyone for the support once again. Uh, we're down. We're out. Uh, we're actually going to jump in a couple of cars and go have a little bit of a race. Go have a fang. Go have a fang. Yeah. Blow the cobwebs off. Absolutely. Yeah. See you guys. See you next episode. You're out. <laughs>